So despite the statements and the posturing from the NCAA and tweets from the ACLU, no one's really trying to ban transgender athletes from collegiate sports. For What Would You Say? I'm John Stone Street. Earlier this week, the NCAA threatened to pull championships and championship events from states that have enacted legislation to keep biological males from competing against biological women. Now, what they claim to be doing is to be creating a path of inclusion for transgender athletes and to prohibit discrimination against transgender athletes. But that's not what's going on here. Here's why. No state has banned athletes from participation in collegiate sports because they're transgender. The only legislation that has been advanced has been about protecting women's sports and women's sports teams and the opportunities afforded to women athletes from being taken over from biological men. This reflects a reality when it comes to athletics. There is an incredible difference between the strength, between the skill, between the performance and the capacity of male athletes versus female athletes. In fact, several months ago on another What Would You Say video, our friend Joseph covered the differences between male athletes and female athletes. There's a reason men and women's athletic competitions have long been separate. Men have, on average, 36% more skeletal muscle mass than women. Men tend to be taller, and their bones are thicker and denser. Conversely, women have lower lung volume and lower airflow capacity because they have smaller lungs and airway diameter. This is just part of the reason that Eric Villan, professor of human genetics at UCLA and a consultant to the International Olympic Committee, concludes that there is a 10 to 12% difference between male and female athletic performance. And if we don't acknowledge these real biological differences that exist between men and women and affect male and female athletes, as Joseph goes on to say later on in the video, then we won't protect the opportunities that women have been given in athletics. We won't protect the scholarship dollars that women have been provided for in athletics. And even worse, we won't protect the physical well-being. We put women at risk of harm. And even more, the very fact that the only policies that have been proposed in legislation is to keep males from participating as females in female sports on female teams tells you everything you need to know that there are biological differences. For example, there have long been biological females who identify as males who participate in NCAA and other collegiate level sports, and no one has ever tried to ban their participation. Why? Well, because these are biological women that are competing against other biological women. There's no unfair advantage. There's no risk being posed to the other athletes that are on the field or on the court. Biologically female athletes identifying as either male or non-binary is nothing new. And no one has proposed any legislation prohibiting biological females who identify as males from participating on male teams. There's not a risk to male athletics because of the incredible number of females that want to suddenly not only identify but participate against other males. This whole issue only goes one direction, and that is biological males wishing to compete as females against other females. And the risk associated with that is becoming increasingly well documented. Again, here's Joseph from a previous What Would You Say video telling some of these stories. A student at Franklin Pierce University in New Hampshire previously competed on the men's track and field team, but now competes as a female. In 2018, as a man, he placed eighth in a field of nine in the 400 meter hurdles during a regular season meet. The following year, competing as a woman, he won the national championship in the 400 meter hurdles by one and a half seconds. It's happening in weightlifting competitions as well. Mary Gregory, a biological male, set new world records in each of the nine events he participated in during an event in April 2019. In 2018, an athlete born male competed in a women's mixed martial arts competition. His opponent, Tamika Brents, was knocked out with a concussion and a broken skull. Afterwards, Miss Brents said, 
I fought a lot of women and have never felt the strength that I felt in a fight as I did that night. I can't answer whether it's because she was born a man or not, because I'm not a doctor. I can only say I've never felt so overpowered in my life, and I'm an abnormally strong female in my own right. So to sum up, no one is banning transgenders from competing in athletics, and the NCAA is not doing anything heroic by threatening financial repercussions. No one is legislating that biological females can't compete against other biological females just because they identify as male or non-binary. And no one is trying to protect male athletics from an invasion of female athletes who identify as male, because it's just not going to happen. The fact that both of these things are not a problem that anyone is trying to deal with reveals the fundamental biological differences between males and females that apply to male and female athletics. The only issue is protecting the opportunities and the scholarships and the physical well-being of biological females from biological males who want to identify and compete as females. And if we do not protect female athletics in this way, then the last several decades of fighting for female equality in athletics through Title IX and other ways will have been for no reason. To see the whole video, Is It Fair for Boys to Play Girls Sports If They Say They're Girls with Joseph Backholm, we'll link to it at the end of this video. For What Would You Say, I'm John Stone Street.